Simplistic and rugged, but a mammoth is fun. Hi there everyone, welcome back up to here in the loft weir yard. It's really good to see you actually and uh, today we've got a review of an item that you had a sneak peek of when I got that Access All Areas tour of rails and uh, I brought it back with me. They were really really kind to uh, let me bring it home and test it on the garden railway so I think you know what it is. So let's go and have a look. <laughs> Well, this is it, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Mamod Steam Railway set. And I can remember as a small child trying to save up to buy one of these. Uh, I remember it well. Boydell's Toy Shop in Bolton, long since gone. I remember right down in the basement, they had all the model railway stuff and they had Mamods. And it's actually where my Mamod steamroller came from. And uh, the story behind that was quite simply, I could never afford the £132 that I would need for this. And I think I bailed out at around the 50 or 60 pound mark and bought the uh, steam roller. So to finally have one of these in my hands is uh, it's, it harks back to that childhood nostalgia and that you know, <laughs> here it is. I finally got one and I'm really, really pleased. So we see here the full set in the box. There's a few bits and pieces missing. Um, I've actually added in uh, one of my spare uh, funnels for filling it. That was missing. And this little recess here, I think, is for the solid fuel tablets, which are long gone. But everything else seems to be here. Now, uh, one of the things that Zoe asked me about was why there was all this space here, almost like there's supposed to be a load in this wagon. And actually, I do know the reason for this. And it was because that this set was sold in two different forms and I remember them both on the shelf in Boydell's Toys and uh, they had the good set as you see here with the log wagon and the open wagon but then they also had a passenger set and pretty much on the same chassis they had a passenger coach and a passenger brake coach and they fitted in here and I have a feeling that the locomotive was actually like a maroon colour that went with those so it's a standard packaging between the two we also get in this packaging some of the track and it's it's very interesting track actually because it's cast metal, solid cast metal designed purely for running live steam on. So if you try to connect power up to this for an electric locomotive you're not going to get very far. And there appears to be enough track here for a full circle and then on top of that, to turn it into an oval, there's a number of straight pieces of track as well. Actually, they're in there quite tight. And the way that these clip together is um, they've just got clips like that, and then bish, bash, bosh, there they go with a slightly staggered end. And they're actually reasonably secure. And I, I'm guessing that this is very durable track. You could leave it out in all weathers and um, it will be absolutely fine. Now my thoughts on this was will it run on standard O gauge track and actually uh, even though this is I guess SM32 um, it will run on, on O gauge track to some extent. The problem that it has when I tested it is that it won't go through the point work. The, the plain track is absolutely fine but the point work the flanges on these are too coarse to actually get through. So if I want to run this on my garden layout, I'm going to actually have to either modify or remove some of the point work. So I've got to think very carefully about that. But I'm going to get the locomotive out first. And what I want to show you is actually what all these other bits and pieces going on here are actually for. So the back of the locomotive, there's a little clip there, and the whole back comes off. And then if I get this piece out, and I had to work it out, there was no instructions in this box with it. What, as far as I can tell, this is for is the solid fuel, fuel tablets are like methylate, solid methylated spirits tablets, and they come in like a cube, and you just put two of them in here upright, light them, 
and then this goes down into there and slides into place and that then allows those solid fuel tablets to be there underneath the boiler and if I take this out you can actually see the char marks where the flames quite literally just play across the bottom of the boiler. It's quite a simple boiler, it is just a, a tube, there's no um, boiler tubes within that tube, that's all we've got going on here. Now as got from Rails of Sheffield, um, it was obviously untested and one of these pistons here was seized in the top dead centre position. But I've actually been able to free that off. There's still a tight spot I can feel just there when it goes around but I suspect that with a bit of oil that I've managed to get into these pistons and running it and running it, it will free up quite nicely. And actually the rest of this mechanism is quite sweet. So you can see there two pistons, and they appear to be double acting pistons um, to some extent, I think. But certainly, unlike the um, Showman's engine and the Road Roller that uh, you've seen in previous videos, actually, we've got some very, very low quality footage of Zoe's Showman's engine running. Um, that had open ended pistons, which this doesn't. So I suspect there's a lot more power to this. And because of those two pistons, it's going to go off on its own. It's not going to need a nudge to get it going. It does have the, the whistle, just like all the other stuff, and this here is a combined safety valve and filler cap, so that does unscrew. And uh, I suspect the water in here is a bit fetid, but you can see there, that's the safety valve. Um, it, it, it will release steam, so you can't actually get this to overpressure dramatically. Um, the funnel there does seem to be a bit loose and I'm not sure why. Um, I don't know whether it's supposed to because actually this is a bit loose as well. So I'm not sure if that's I'm not actually sure what's going on with that, whether there's a way of tightening that or whether it is supposed to be loose. Now I haven't steamed this up. Um, I need to find some solid fuel tablets to be able to do that. And maybe we'll do that in another video. But I, I am wondering, is there an issue with this, uh, with leaks or, you know, with these loose parts, does that mean that it's it's not going to steam up? I don't actually know. But the rest of the paintwork on this actually looks to be in pretty reasonable condition. The green on the sides um, is pretty scratch free. The only um, thing that I have noticed is there's some damage on the boiler there. And I can only conclude that that's because this hook which I'm guessing is something to do with uh, I don't know whether it's something to do with being able to uh, pull this in and out when it gets really hot I'm really not sure what it's for but for some reason this was um, I found this sort of tucked away like that down the the side of the the boiler so I can only conclude that that has been the cause of some of these scratches. So other things about this locomotive, the buffers, they're not sprung, but uh, again, uh, they, a little bit, ah, they just screw in, so just tighten them up. We've got the minimum and maximum there on a, a sight glass, and the inside of the boiler looks absolutely filthy, so I might have to give it a, a wash out with um, probably something like vinegar, white vinegar, um, because that could just be something as simple as lime scale, if this has been used previously in a hard water area. And that might actually explain why the piston was stuck at top dead center. So maybe a vinegar boiler wash just to try and remove some of that scale might be no bad thing. The rest of the inside of this cab does look really nice and clean. I'm going to put the cab back on and uh, just fiddle that in, clunk clip every trip. And um, yeah, front face of the locomotive, we've got the smoke box rivet detail, and this here is the forward, neutral, and reverse positioning for the um, the actual um, inclination. I think of the. Let's just see how it does it. 
Now there is a valve chest in there and this is altering the position of the ports inside. So this is actually a great deal more complex than some of the other Mammoth things in their range. So it's little wonder that whereas you know, the others were about 50 to 60 pounds, this was over 132 uh, back in the day. So I'm going to just slide the locomotive back into place and I'm going to turn to some of the other bits and pieces here. Let's have a look at some of the rolling stock. So I'm going to slide out the open wagon and again this looks in beautiful condition. There is a little trace of rust just right down there inside but nothing that a little bit of cure rust won't fix. Um, it's not a big big issue at all. The actual running faces of the wheels do show this has been run a little bit although the rails themselves don't show excessive wear so either it's not been run on these rails or um, it hasn't been run an awful lot at all. The couplings themselves it has this fixed hook with just a ring there's no spring loading on that and if I pull out the other wagon you just have to literally hook that in like that and that is the coupling and uh, then if it needs to push it can push actually with there's no risk of buffer lock on these so it's probably equally as suited to push as to pull and uh, you do kind of have to jiggle them about a bit to get them back apart but these are lovely simple but lovely wagons that are a little bit reminiscent to me of the um, the old Hornby O-gauge wagons. Um, I have seen quite a few of these open wagons around second hand. I guess they did get sold separately as well and there is an ever so slight memory as a child of being able to buy extra wagons and stuff. Um, so you know you could start out with either the good set and buy the coaches or the coaching set and buy the wagons and there were other locomotives available not just in different colours but I have seen one which looked a little bit like Welsh Pony with a kind of a saddle tank and a tender so there was more to this range than this basic starter set would perhaps suggest indeed I know that they sold points and extra track too now this wagon is a little bit peculiar in that we've got this load of logs but they're made out of polystyrene. I can't imagine that uh, polystyrene logs running straight behind a locomotive with an open flame would have been the greatest of ideas but they do seem to have survived. They're probably not the best of logs um, and my guess is that maybe some people did change them for real logs and uh, I was looking at some of the bits and pieces on our wood pile and it does strike me that uh, three real logs cut to length might actually work an awful lot better. Now these are just sprung loaded but you can see there on that one that age has not been kind and it started to push the spring beyond its elastic limit and it has uh, kind of um, uh, stretched out a little bit exactly the same chassis on this wagon as on the open wagon actually no looking at that no I, I take I row that back it's got the same side pieces and wheels and buffer beams but whereas this wagon has the the top part riveted on this has got a different chassis mechanism just pop riveted on and then also it's got uh, these hooks and uh, cradles again pop riveted onto the sides but um, commonality of parts you can actually see the holes ready and waiting on the the side pieces for this particular wagon so it is a standard chassis so all of these a nice standard wheelbase and I do like the red painted front faces of the wheels it is a really nice package even down to the little M on the axle box covers for Mamod steam railways so here we have it then the the full set and I'm gonna do that vinegar wash on the boiler and then we'll try and steam it because obviously if it's full of scale 
that's going to cause some issues in terms of it acts like an insulator in the boiler and stops it from heating up quite so well and also it'll be gumming up the mechanism. We've also got in here, I'm just going to try and slip this out, I think that this is steam oil. Now, steam oil, you say, you may wonder what that is, but it, it, it is quite literally what it says. It's oil for steam locomotives. And the reason for this is that regular oil and steam don't really mix very well. Um, you tend to find that they're, they're basically just immiscible. So I'm guessing that this being proper steam oil means that you can lubricate the motive part motion uh, and the parts in this and getting a little bit wet is not going to cause any issues. You're not going to get that emulsification that you do with regular oil. And actually it's probably testament to how little this locomotive has run in its life that this little bottle of steam oil is still mostly full. So there we have it, the full Mammon steam railway set. And um, I just must extend a great, great thanks to uh, John at Rails for letting me take this away and test it on my garden railway to see whether it is something that I can actually get to run round. And I am very tempted to go the live steam route. If this works, then what I'm going to have to do is one of the points is going to get plain lined and that will remove that as an issue. And I'll have to see whether I can remove one of the check rails from the other point which will let this run through without compromising the ability for the O-gauge electric powered stuff to run as well. So there's still a lot of experimentation to go and I've got to clean up the garden railway before I can even contemplate how well this runs out there. So look forward to that as another video, but this is, um, this is my childhood memories really coming home to roost and I'm so pleased to be able to hold this for you here now. Well, I hope you really enjoyed that video. It's been really great to have your company on this. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel and you'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up and like this one too, tickling that like button. It helps swell my ego and if my ego gets too big, I won't fit back through the loft hatch so I get to live up here. Yay! Or something like that. I don't know. I think we need a mini fridge. That's, yeah, I don't know. And uh, talking of mini fridges, if you want to uh, support the channel, head on over to Patreon and uh, you can pledge support for Jenny to have a mini fridge in Weir Yard. But until next time, you take really good care of yourself. And I'll see you here again. Bye for now. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Bob Threeton, Alec Ralph, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, and oorail.co.uk. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk. Thank you. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Nobty Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.